Welcome to this tutorial on raster to vector, the power behind Corel Power Trace. In this tutorial, we'll look at the steps involved in converting an image from a raster file to vector objects that we can use in a design or a logo. First, before we get started, an explanation as to the difference between a raster file and a vector file. A raster image, also called a bitmap, is an image that is made up of pixels. A pixel is the smallest piece of information in an image and is arranged in a two-dimensional array. I'll show you what I mean. If I zoom into this image, you'll see that the individual pixels. An example of a raster image is a scanned image or an image from a digital camera. While this type of image is great for photographs, it's not very good if you need to resize the image to a larger dimension. Some file formats that are raster would include Windows Bitmap, JPEG, PSD, and CPT. A vector image, on the other hand, is an image defined by geometric primitives, or line segments, that have start and end points. It uses mathematical calculations to create the objects. The main advantage here is that a 1 inch by 1 inch image can be resized to 50 inches by 50 inches or larger and still not lose quality. It is this format that is preferable for printing, where clean, crisp lines are required. Some file formats that are vector include WMF, DXF, CGM, CMX, and of course CDR. Now let's get into PowerTrace and see how easy it is. After launching CorelDRAW, we're going to need to import our raster image. I can either use the interactive property bar here and click on the import icon, or from the file menu, I'll select import and then browse to where my image is stored. Now of course I can crop my image once I bring it in, but I can also crop from within the import dialog box. By selecting crop in the drop down, I'll be presented with another window where I can select the area that we need. I'll click OK and once I have my placement cursor I'll click on the mouse button to place the image. You will notice that with the bitmap selected I have access to the trace bitmap on the property bar. I can also access the same options from the bitmap menu right here. So if I click on the Trace Bitmap button, you will see three main options. Quick Trace, Centerline Trace, and Outline Trace. Quick Trace will use the settings of the last trace as the defaults to trace the currently selected image. The Centerline Tracing method uses unfilled, closed, and open curves or strokes and is suitable for tracing technical illustrations, maps, line drawings, and signatures. Under here, there are two options. Technical illustration to trace black and white illustrations with thin, faint lines, or line drawings to trace black and white sketches with thick, prominent lines. This method is also referred to as stroke tracing. The third option the outline trace method uses curved objects with no outlines and is suitable for tracing clip art, logos, and photo images. The outline trace method is also referred to as fill or contour tracing. Under outline trace, there are a number of presets. They include line art, which lets you trace black and white sketches and illustrations, logo for tracing simple logos with little detail and few colors, detail logo which lets you trace logos that contain fine detail and many colors. Clip art lets you trace ready-to-use graphics that vary according to their amount of detail and number of colors. Low quality image allows you to trace photos that lack fine detail or that contain fine detail that you want to ignore. And of course high quality image which lets you trace high quality highly detailed photos. Now a small side note here if the resolution of your image is too high or your file is too large, you will be presented with a message indicating that the image will need to be reduced in size. PowerTrace has the ability to do this automatically. Typically, you will only see this message if the image is over 5 megabytes in size. 
For this design, I'm going to select Logo. This will launch PowerTrace and present me with my options. On the Settings tab, I have the ability to control the details, smoothing and corner smoothing. This will allow more or less detail to be picked up in the final trace. Some of the options that I have available include the ability to delete the original image and remove the background. I also have the ability to specify the color that I want to remove. Now in a situation where there are small objects with that color, you can select to remove color from the entire image. If the trace routine detects multiple objects of the same color that are next to each other, merging adjacent objects will weld these to form a single object. If I move over to the color tab, I have the ability to dictate what color model the design will be in. What this means in simple terms is that if the design is to be used for vinyl cutting or screen printing, I do not need to manually go through the entire design, selecting each individual red object and converting it to a PMS color, then selecting each yellow object and converting that. I can do this entire process in one simple mouse click. I can also very easily reduce the number of colors, either by using this slider or by merging the colors. Once I have the colors reduced to the amount that I want, I also have the ability to edit the individual color. This is beneficial if a client wants to use a specific PMS color to match their corporate colors. For example, I'll change the yellow object to PMS 109. And I'll use PMS 216 for the red color. I'll click OK and we're done. Now that the image has been converted to vector, I can continue to clean it up so that I can rebuild the logo for my customer. So you see, if a customer sends a low quality bitmap image, it is possible to turn out high quality work. All this is possible because of the power behind Corel PowerTrace.